Thank you. We want to uh, thank the sponsors for this opportunity to be able to contribute to this bold initiative for London's riverfront. Our team is comprised of almost 40 creative professionals, some of whom are Londoners. Our team includes landscape architects, urbanists, architects, planners, ecologists, finance and development specialists, municipal, structural, geotechnical, and water resources engineers, fluvial geomorphologists, lighting specialists, and bridge designers. Our team brings international experience with Stoss Landscape Urbanism, who excel at projects that are complex, require richly pragmatic and elegantly creative solutions that integrate landscape ecology, infrastructure, and urbanism as part of the outcome. Their work in Milwaukee, Boston, Green Bay, and Dallas exemplifies this. Dylan's partnership with Stoss is complementary. We bring local knowledge and a deep understanding of this city. Dylan was founded in London, has been a partner in city building for almost 70 years. From London, the firm has grown into 17 cities across Canada, is made up of 30 professional disciplines, also having award-winning waterfront projects across Canada. We collaborated also with international experts, Limnatech for water resources, James Lima for development economics, Rosales and Partners for bridge design, Landform, land, Planform for ecology, and Ombrage for lighting. London is experiencing a confluence of planning opportunities that will transform the city during the next 20 years. The Thames River is pivotal to defining the social, civic, and economic po possibilities in these plans. The city has made great strides in laying the foundations in the London plan, in shift moving London forward that addresses multimodal transportation, Dundas Place, which brings the heart of the city back to the core and then extends it to the waterfront, and of course my favorite as a Dillon person, the Thames Valley Master Plan. These plans aspire to bring Londoners back to the river the city's partners, the Upper Thames River Conservation Authority, has plans for the ecological renewal of the river, a cleaner, safer river. The London Community Foundation has plans for partnering to strengthen the social fabric of the community. The vision for the river should not be established for Londoners. It needs to be designed with Londoners. The London Foundation provided an insightful survey that guided the creative placemaking we propose tonight. We know that this is about the untapped potential of the river itself, connecting the community physically and socially. What the community expressed uh, as its most important idea was they wanted to use the valley for walking, hiking, cycling along a connected riverfront system. Londoners also stated that they valued the ecology and environmental benefit of the river and that it provided a beautifully diverse refuge in the city. The community expressed that the river is also a place for social connection. Its parks and gardens are important to their families and to the quality of their lives. And finally, people love cultural heritage associated with the river, the physical reminders of the city's past, its evolution, and a promise for future growth. And we have listened and responded. Chris. Great, thanks, Aha. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Chris Reed. What an amazingly rich starting point you have here. Uh, the Thames has a beauty and a life uh, that's really its own. Its mood changes from dawn to midday to dusk. Uh, and over the course of the years, the seasons change uh, as well. It's great to see Londoners rediscovering the river, really experiencing the river in many different ways, and in this sense, really experiencing nature in the heart of the city. But there's some real issues that we need to deal with here. Flooding, particularly, uh, is important. 
the trails are loved, but some of them are almost over loved, if you will. Um, and we want to give them more room. Some of them need a lot of love, um, if you will. And if you look, I mean, if you really look around the city, the fabric of downtown oddly peters out as it approaches uh, the river. You have more parking lots and empty lots. You have large land uses like hydro blocking access uh, to the river. Uh, fortunately, in Soho, one of those large land uses, the hospital is going away, and so it opens up big questions of what to do there. But it's also a place on both sides, really, where the natural topography also becomes a barrier. Uh, to river access. So what do we do? For us, it's all, all about building on what's already here, building on the richness that's already in place. You can think of the river corridor really in three as uh, three distinct parts. The upper part near downtown uh, Harris Park, really building on, amplifying the civic and celebratory qualities uh, of that space. At the Thames Park, across from the hydro and, and brewery sites, uh, where uh, there are a lot of recreational activities, the question there becomes how can we extend some of those activities and really create connections directly uh, to the river. And finally, over in Soho and Watson Park, the question becomes, how can we do something that's super environmental, that really allows us to immerse ourselves uh, in the richness and wildness uh, of nature? Currently, though, there are a lot of disconnections, both along the river and between the river and the urban fabric. Uh, we want to intensify the river strands, creating multiple pathways uh, for water for people along the river valley itself. We want to intensify river access from the river up into neighborhoods and vice versa. We also want to extend the city fabric, uh, extend the social fabric of the city, not just downtown, but in all of London's uh, nearby neighborhoods, to really create this integrated set of systems, uh, so to intensify really the presence of the Thames in the everyday lives of Londoners. With that, then, we create a ribbon of riverfront parks with complementary adjacent development that really creates new places along the way, new destinations, and really reasserts uh, London as a leading world-class city, uh, one of the newest and vibrant in all of North America. We do this with a series of very, very simple parts, a series of threads, linear threads on the left, pathways, water runnels, etc., to promote connectivity along the river and a series of pods or destinations, uh, places that attract people, places for the cultivation of habitat. And these allow us to, to be uh, slightly more intensive when we need to be, uh, but they also offer the opportunity for us to use uh, a very, very light hand. And so in this, all of this adds up to a river system, a park system, uh, that really puts the environments first and reconnects uh, London to its most precious environmental resource, forest city, river city, uh, London. To do this, though, before the good, beautiful parks, we need to fix the river system itself. We've been working with uh, Limnotech, our hydrologist, to really figure out um, some of the severe flooding issues, flooding historically, uh, flooding in more contemporary times here. Certainly flood control is necessary, but it doesn't have to look like that, right? I mean, how disappointing to finally get down to the river and see that. We think there are ways to soften infrastructure, to civilize it, to, to, to modify it in ways that allow for the, the blossoming of ecological and environmental life, to integrate multiple pathways, multiple planting areas, to really use plants for what they do uh, in the native and natural environment, and where we have space to really lay back some of that infrastructure to create new destination uh, parks along the way. We've also been working with Limnotech very carefully to develop a two-part scheme uh, for the river. It's, a, it's a, an agenda about convey and delay. On the north branch, what we have is a lot of backed up uh, water. And what we need to do there is open up the banks and get the water moving more quickly through that area. 
On the other hand, uh, in the southern areas, we want to delay the water, we want to slow it down, and we want to take advantage of some of the oxbows or the old oxbows in the river in order to allow the faster movement of the north uh, branch uh, to pass. So we develop a series of strategies with them to lay back the banks, to take out some of the bridge uh, foundations to allow uh, water to move more uh, quickly along uh, the north branch and to really create river gardens uh, in that area. And then on the south branch to really create new channels, new pools, uh, new topographies for holding and delaying water uh, in place. All this, of course, creates new ecological opportunities and new opportunities for social life. We also have to very much respect the regulatory uh, floodlines of the river, making sure that new development is well integrated um, with thoughtful flood control. Of course, we, we study two areas in particular, the Forks uh, and Soho. Here at the Forks, um, we want to transform Harris Park and the entire western edge of downtown into a celebratory and signature park that becomes the new heart of social and civic life uh, in the city. It becomes a series of destination places, event places, mixed in with new trails and river gardens. Here you can see a detail where we have not one but multiple paths at multiple elevations so that people can move fast or slow. People can get a, an experience directly of the river or uh, an experience inland. We're replacing lawns with river meadows, wet meadows, soft meadows, uh, creating new uh, uh, civic greens, a great lawn for big festivals and events, water gardens uh, to experience nature and then new destination event spaces, an amphitheater that's as much about the performance of, of festivals and events and music and art as it is about watching some of the uh, river flooding activity in the distance. And of course, this is a great opportunity to transform this space in the winter into a, a, a new skating area for the city right uh, along the river. By the way, it's a very robust, I don't know if you noticed, that orchestra never goes away. <laughs> They're pretty good. <laughs> of course, the park is designed to flood, and it's, it's designed to celebrate the flood, um, to, to allow people safe access to the park even when the river's rising, so that people can get a sense of the life of the river uh, in their everyday lives. The heart of the park, the Great Lawn, some of the civic areas will be the inaugural project here, as well as this overlook, which provides visual access from the bluff above, uh, down to the, the heart of that new uh, park. Untying the knot of infrastructure is an important part of this piece. We've got to deal with this transportation uh, juggernaut here uh, with bridges that really kind of crowd the forks, crowd the confluence, and really make an uncomfortable entrance uh, to the park. Uh, what we propose is taking those two bridges, the Kensington and the Queens, replacing the Kensington with a celebratory circular uh, bridge for pedestrians and bicyclists only that touches all three banks right at the forks and moving the Queens Avenue bridge north, north of the heritage buildings so that it can accommodate uh, bus rapid transit, pedestrians, bicycles, all forms of transit in a new location. By doing that, we're able to undo some of the constrictions of the water flow and really create this amazing celebratory moment at the city's most significant uh, ecological and hydrologic uh, resource. The bridge itself is a very light think truss that kind of fits in with the landscape uh, on the one hand and creates a, a dramatic statement on the other. And by doing this, by removing these two bridges, the museum is resituated within the park on the waterfront with a great event space and this new entry uh, along Dundas Street that really opens up and dramatically slopes down to the river, providing direct access uh, to it. On the South Fork in Soho, we imagine an eco-district that spans the South Fork from Soho to Watson Park and extends Victoria Hospital's public health legacy uh, to the environment. Uh, here we have a series of wetland pods, wetland park to the south, 
uh, as well as a way that we've extended the park landscape directly up into uh, that development site, into the, the, the uh, Soho neighborhood, creating a new town green uh, that the new development surrounds. This will be residential development uh, with an environmental spin. Here we're looking at um, a, a view from that new town green with a view across to the river, uh, to the eco park, and then a, a little walk across the river on a second circular bridge. Then when you get down into the park, you discover wetlands, meadows, gardens, all sorts of ecological experiences that you can't have in other places, really hyper amplified. Uh, for people and in ways that allow people to take advantage of them with canoes and kayaks and running and even zip lines that, that allow you to fly through the park. Of course, it's an all-weather uh, kind of place, so snowshoeing, uh, cross-country skiing is also important. One of the centerpieces of the new park is a meadow hill that rises up out of the floodplain, uh, allows for lots of different kinds of winter activities, uh, sledding down the hill, skating, hockey, of course, um, snowshoeing, um, and really kind of enlivening this part of the river from what is now uh, a landfill. Of course, this too is designed to flood and really t designed to celebrate the flood, holding waters in place um, during extreme flood stages. London is a city of bridges. Uh, it's a city of interesting bridges, but somewhat disparate bridges. We wanted to develop a strategy to bring this all together and really celebrate the experience of crossing the river. Bridges like this aren't so nice. Uh, but what we can do is develop a common lighting strategy that gently lights the underbelly of each of the bridges to create a warm glow, and also creates a lighting effect up, up top so that you know when you're crossing uh, the river. The urban strategy is as important here. We're looking at all the available sites in and around the city as complements to what uh, we're developing down in the River Valley itself, uh, and looking at four distinct districts designed to attract new audiences to the city. Up north at the Lafarge site, we're imagining a, a live-work, uh, makerspace, artist loft kind of um, uh, environment with new student housing that draws, that begins to, to cultivate a kind of creative class community within the city. In downtown, we're talking about a 24-7 uh, kind of infill development, allowing for residential development, some institutional development, and getting a kind of uh, day-night life that supports uh, a wide range of retail and direct access to the river. Around the Labatt's Brewery site, we're imagining a new food and entertainment district uh, with housing that might attract millennials to town and might be a great place to bring your uh, family on a warm uh, summer day um, uh, outdoor, enjoying the outdoors, uh, in a great new urban environment. And finally, down in Soho, uh, the new eco-district neighborhood, residential primarily on this bluff uh, overlooking uh, the river. All of this, in many ways, leads to a world-class river park uh, system in what will become North America's most vibrant, uh, newly revitalized city, a rich and diverse meeting ground for people and the environment, an enriched forest city, an intensified river city, and a re-energized London. Thank you.